any climate target involves a moral trade-off between money and human lives. And although the right choices might seem obvious to you, others will disagree, and science doesn't really have any objective basis to say who's right. So why do people talk about this two degrees Celsius target as being a science-based target? What does that phrase even mean? Real science never tries to tell people what they should or shouldn't do. You'll never find any peer-reviewed scientific paper that says we must stop climate change to protect future generations. That would be called a normative statement, an opinion about how the world should be, and that's simply not allowed in peer-reviewed publications. Science does make predictions as to what will happen depending on our choices. For example, a medical paper might say that people who smoke cigarettes are more likely to die of, of lung cancer, and it might estimate the number of lives that could be saved by a ban on smoking. But you'll never find a scientific paper that says the government should ban cigarettes or wear masks in a pandemic, because those would be normative statements. Similarly, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change tells us that continuing to damage our atmosphere will kill a great many people. And the IPCC shows us how our future might be different if we make different choices. And for example, by limiting warming to be well within two degrees Celsius of pre-industrial temperatures. But the choices as to whether we let people die or try something different are still ours to make as a society. Now, if you're a sensitive human being, you might be saying, I don't want anyone to die. What do I have to do to keep the world safe for humanity? And in hopeful optimism, you might imagine that this is what this two degree limit is meant to be. If that's you, then you sound like a very nice person, but unfortunately I have some very bad news for you. That ship has sailed. Climate change is already killing 150,000 people per year, according to the World Health Organization. And that number is bound to grow no matter what we do at this point. If we could go back in time to the 1990s and the time of the Kyoto Protocol, scientists did come up with a few options that might have saved pretty much everyone if we had gotten started right away. But that's not the path we chose. So knowing that two degrees is not a safe level, you might then assume that it's some kind of tipping point, one of these critical points where large, abrupt, irreversible damage could occur to our planet. But it's not that either. Tipping points are real, but there's more than one, and scientists don't know exactly where they are. The only way we can really know at what warming level a tipping point will be triggered is if we actually trip over one of them, and by then it's too late. So the most important tipping points are probably above 2 degrees Celsius, or there might be some below 1.5. We just don't know. It's a risk we cannot eliminate. So 2 degrees Celsius is not a safe threshold, and it's not a tipping point either. It actually comes from the UNFCCC Conference of the Parties. This is an annual forum where all the world's nations gather to negotiate what to do about climate change. People get these organizations confused, but they're very different. The IPCC is a scientific body rigorously committed to the truth, whereas the COP is a political body that argues about how much money we should spend on saving lives and who should spend it. The IPCC writes the assessment reports, which has all of these dire predictions about climate change, while the COP writes the treaties like the Kyoto Protocol, the Copenhagen Accord, and the Paris Agreement. And it's the COP, not the IPCC, that proposed that we should limit global warming to well below 2 degrees, preferably 1.5 degrees Celsius, compared to pre-industrial temperatures. The IPCC has paid particular attention to these two thresholds, but it did so because the COP asked them to, not because these numbers have any special scientific significance. 
two degrees Celsius is just a political compromise between what we would like to do and what we think is achievable. The COP has relied on science from the IPCC to gauge how much damage climate change would do and to estimate how much it would cost to slow it down by different levels. And then they made a judgment call. That's why it's a science-based target and not a target set by science. If we do manage to limit global warming to within 2 degrees Celsius of pre-industrial temperatures, that is still a world where New York is hit by a once in 500 year storm like Hurricane Sandy every five years. That is still a world where rivers flood more than twice as often as they used to and hundreds of millions of people are forced out of their homes as entire nations are wiped off the map by rising sea levels. Uh, it's a world where we sp have to spend billions to secure our drinking water supply and build levees and stormwater drainage. And wh all while the price of food keeps skyrocketing. That two degrees Celsius future is still much better than a three degrees Celsius warmer world, and it's much less expensive to achieve, at least in the short term, than a 1.5 degrees Celsius world. And that's what makes two degrees a political compromise. So understanding that this is really a political target, why do people confuse the issue by calling it a science-based target? Well, it's to point out the difference between this thought out approach and the mere token gestures that politicians and corporations like to do just for show. We need a way to point out that weaker targets would lead us to global catastrophe while acknowledging that it's already too late to save everyone. That compromise zone between disaster and utopia is what science-based targets really are. And I think it's important to understand that and to talk about it that way, because political consensus can change quite often. Scientific consensus, not so much. If people get to thinking that two degrees Celsius is a science, uh, is a scientific target, then people will be surprised if it changes later on. But it very well could change. New science could tell us that these, tar these uh, warming levels are safer or less safe than what we previously thought, perhaps because we learn more about these tipping points. Or new technology could make it easier to meet more aggressive targets, and we might want to, to lower uh, the target warming uh, because of that. But if we change the target at this point, that risks undermining public trust in climate science. To see the communication problems that can create, just look at the uh, public's confusion over the science of ice ages versus climate change. Back in the 1970s, journalists uh, incorrectly reported that the Earth was cooling and heading towards another ice age. The reality was that the science was always clear, even in the 1970s, uh, that anthropogenic warming was uh, already strong enough to overwhelm what would otherwise be a natural cooling cycle. But the public's perception is now that scientists keep changing their mind. Once they thought that the planet was cooling, now they think that it's warming, maybe they're going to change their mind again. So because this science was misreported, we now have an extra communication challenge about climate change. So please, let's avoid uh, further miscommunications by being careful to call them science-based targets, not scientific targets. And please don't pretend that these two degrees Celsius or one and a half degrees Celsius targets are somehow dictated by science or in any way safe. We do not have any safe options anymore, but we can reduce the scale of the catastrophe and the goal should be to do as much as we can as fast as we can. Thank you for doing that and thank you for watching.